My name is Uyime Ivy Ubon King and um, I've been married for 17 years now. I used to work as head of security in a church in New York, Kwaibom State, and she, I noticed that my, my work was intelligent to ensure that things don't come against our pastor and his family. And I noticed that there's always this person sitting like two or three rows directly for always a particular seat. And I was really concerned because I didn't want anybody to attack the first family. <laughs> so what I did was that I approached her. This guy approaches me and then tells me that they're looking for a protocol person to join the unit. It was just guys then. And they needed a girl who would attend to the pastor's wife and all. And I asked her if she would like to join the security unit because I wanted to make sure that I mitigated the risk. And she agreed, then I knew it was a serious matter, that she <laughs> wanted to be close to the family. And that's how we met. She was always there. So to take her away from observation, I decided to bring her on board. That's how we met. Well, you know, you, 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 you get what you ask for. So I specifically asked God that I didn't want a, a woman that was um, a wife that would just be like a textbook. I wanted a mischievous wife. And when we started, you know, communicating and relating, we were privileged to follow our pastor to Benin. And I was like security, remember? And she was like my pastor's wife's PA. So they had an urgent meeting to go and meet Archbishop Benson in the house. So they left the two of us in the room to quickly tidy up. Unfortunately, they locked the room. Yeah, they didn't remember who in the room. Yes, they didn't remember. <laughs> then, for some reason, I just don't know what entered Oyeme's head. I can't explain. She just went, went to the window, opened the window, and jumped out. I didn't even think about it. I she just jumped, jumped out. out. This is somebody that if you look at her, you think that she's <laughs> Sister Mary. Can you but imagine? she now turned to shoot her <laughs> and jumped out. Then I knew that she's the one. For me, the choice of a husband, I was a young lady who read a lot and had formed a lot of my values about marriage from the books I was reading, from the things I was hearing both in church. I had some qualities that I wanted in the person I would marry and for me, character was important. So, after relating for a while, I realized that he's got character, he's got fearing, and I could give it a chance. And so, I had mouth. Yes, plenty. Divorce has never been something that I have ever looked at. Have there been instances where there have been challenges in the relationship? Yes. That is exactly what actually brings the relationship together because every single one of us has weaknesses and it is understanding how to tolerate each other. I know that as the husband of the house, the box stops on my table, you know, and the owners left to me to lead the family. So if there is a challenge, it is my responsibility to sort it out. I'm always the first person to say I'm sorry, even if it is my fault or her fault. I say I'm sorry for it because if I didn't do what I did or allowed her to do what she did, and if I didn't guide it, then if she takes a decision, then she might have been justified. So I always apologize for everything first. I take responsibility. There's no relationship without conflict and challenges. It's actually how you handle these conflicts when they come. And we've had our own fair share of conflict. The one thing that um, we both agreed on from the start was that the word divorce was not going to be a part of our vocabulary at all. We learned how to communicate. I think that's one thing strong that we have going for us. There's really nothing that we can talk about, no matter how sensitive it is, no matter how upsetting it is, we would always talk and resolve it. No, it's not. It's not. I think that um, marriage was God's divine design, you know, to bring two people together from different backgrounds, each one expressing their strength, where the other person is weak, um, standing in for that person because both people have weaknesses and they have strengths. So I believe that marriage is one of the greatest things that was God ever invented. It's a divine institution and I believe that it's not overrated. Marriage is a huge blessing if it is used the way God designed it to be. There's only one problem and that's communication. If you cannot communicate, it will always bring, it will always come down. 
to divorce. Remember, whoever you marry is not your sister. Comes from a different background. So there are certain things that person has gone through, you know, has seen that you have never seen. Love is a verb for me. It means that, you know, um, a lot of people know how to talk the talk. Mm. But when it comes to action, it's missing. Somebody can tell you, I love you, you're the best thing after the invasion of the microwave. But when it comes down to the brass tacks, the person does not match his or her words with action. So for me, the best way you can show your spouse that you love them is by action. It's not so much in the big things. All the expensive gifts in this world cannot make up for the love you should give your spouse. And it's expressed in little thoughtful ways. So when you love your partner in their love language, then for me, that makes love a verb. Now, my love language is words of affirmation. Yeah. Her own is quality time. Okay, when we're newly married, when it was just um, two of us, he did, he used to. But life has become um, very busy. And for me, I'm not that kind of woman that... Um, would insist, oh, he has to come and wash plates to prove a point. <coughs> no, I don't, because we can afford to pay for that help mm -hmm. in the house Absolutely. so that he doesn't have to do it. But when we go on holidays, mm. he does. And he, he would wash plates, he would even want to cook with the children and all of that. Because those are things he knows how to do. Absolutely. Yeah. He's somebody that um, has made marriage really fun for me. And he's somebody that promised that he would love and take care of me and he has done that as a verb practically in action yes. and um, i want to appreciate him for that i don't take that for granted i know that a lot of people after they've been married for a while there's this tendency that okay sabi finish in nigerian mm -hmm. parlance like you've seen everything finish. what else is there you don't bother to try mm -hmm. but i don't i don't take him for granted in any way and i appreciate all he does for me and the children and um, I want to say that he's my right or die for life. Right. And I love you. Don't think about all the hard stuff. Think about, you know, your relationship will build as you grow. We're doing 18 years this September. We've been in relationship for 22 years. So when we started, we didn't have a house. We didn't have a job. That does not mean that if you want to get married her, don't come and quote me that you should have a job. We didn't have it, but we had love for each other. Make sure that the person you are relating with is your friend. Yeah. Your friend. Because if the person is not your friend, once you get into marriage, you will find a friend. If your wife is not your girlfriend, you will find one. I just want to say that marry your friend is important and no matter what happens, fight for your communication is important as you grow along and then when you're going into marriage do not be carried away by the material things those are important because without finance there's no romance like they say it's important but it's not the most important thing first look at the character of the person that's the foundation is important character and of course that person has to be god-fearing as well and Willing to listen, listen to you is important. If your spouse or your friend begins to insult you now, mm. know that it will grow. Whatever yeah. you don't deal with at courtship, it grows in grows, marriage. Yeah. If it's somebody that says he just takes a few, you know, shots of drink now, when he gets into marriage, he'll be taking bottles. You know, <laughs> if it's something you can't deal with, then please, you know, your life is more important. Yeah. Mm. And you know, don't even be carried away because. The person is being so nice to you. Yeah. How do they treat other people yes. who can really not do much for them? Maybe people that they think are beneath their their class or something. So check that as well. Because if he's showing only you all the love, all the niceness and everything, and is nasty to every other person, that's really who they are. So you would want to check that. If he likes his toys too much, don't play with his toys. If he likes his G-Wagon and flaunts the G-Wagon, the beauty of the G-Wagon, the day you drive his car and that car is dirty, mm. you will hear it from him. Oh, wow. I hope you have a very lovely Valentine's. Thank you. Together. <laughs> Together. <laughs>